Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for being part of our family and being part of this Adam and Kawa series. And today is the final two chapters and we will be done with reading as a family with you guys and with all of us here because we are moving on to another section and another segment um, starting tomorrow. And we hope that you guys will tune in for that and you guys will... Enjoy the new stuff that we have uh, prepared, that we have planned. It's going to be a lot different than what we've ever done on this channel. And so we will um, we will be presenting that to you. Okay, we are in Adam and Kawa, second book. And uh, here we go. After this, another company gathered together, and they went to look after their brethren. But they perished as well as they. And so it was, company after company, until only a few of them were left. Then Yared, sickened from grief, and his sickness was such that day of his death drew near. Then he called his Kanak, his eldest son, and Methuselah, Kanak's son, and Lamech, the son of Methuselah, and Noah, the son of Lamech. And when they were come to him, he prayed over them and blessed them and said to them, Ye are righteous, innocent sons. Go ye not down from this holy mountain. For behold, your children and your children's children have gone down from this holy mountain and have estranged themselves from this holy mountain through their abominable lust and transgression of Elohim's commandment. But I know through the power of Elohim that he will not leave you on this holy mountain because your children have transgressed his commandment and that of our fathers, which we have received from them. But, O oh my sons, Elohim will take you to a strange land and ye shall never again return to behold with your eyes this garden and this holy mountain. Therefore, O oh my sons, set your hearts on your own selves and keep the commandment of Elohim, which is with you. And when ye go from this holy mountain into a strange land, which ye know not, take with you the body of our father Adam, and with it th these pr precious gifts and offerings, namely the gold, the incense, and the myrrh, and let them be in the place where the body of our father Adam shall lay. And unto him of you who shall be left, O my sons, shall the word of Elohim come. And when he goes out of this land, he shall take with him the body of our father Adam, and shall lay it in the middle of the earth, the place in which salvation shall be wrought. Then Noach said unto him, Who is he of us that shall be left? And Yared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loins, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place whence salvation shall come. Then Yared turned to his son Kanak, and said unto him, Thou, my son, abide in this cave, and minister diligently before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life, and feed thy people in righteousness and innocence. And Yared said no more. His hands were loosened, his eyes closed, and he entered into rest like his father's. His death took place in the 360th year of Noah, and in the 989th year of his own life, on the 12th of Takas, on a sixth day. I don't even know what that is. It must be some Jewish day they threw in there. But as Yared died, tears streamed down his face by reason of his great sorrow for the children of Sheth who had fallen in his days. Then Kenak, Methuselah, Lamach, and Noach, these four wept over him, embalmed him carefully, and then laid him in the cave of treasures. Then they rose and mourned for him forty days. And when these days of mourning were ended, Kenak, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noach remained in sorrow of heart because their father had departed from them, and they saw him no more. All right, final chapter of Adam and Kawa. Only three righteous men left in this world, the evil conditions of men prior to the flood. Verse 1. But Kanak kept the commandment of Yared his father and continued to minister in the cave. It is this Kanak to whom many wonders happened and who also wrote his celebrated book. But those wonders may not be told in this place. Then after this, the children of Sheth went astray and fell they. Their children and their wives, and when Kanak, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noach saw them, their hearts suffered by reason of their fall into doubt, full of unbelief. And they wept and sought of Elohim's mercy to preserve them and to bring them out of that wicked generation. Kanak continued in his ministry before Yahuwah 385 years, and at the end of that time he became aware through the grace of Elohim that Elohim intended to remove him from the earth. He then said to his son, O oh my son, I know that Elohim intends to bring the waters of the flood upon the earth and to destroy our creation. And ye are, that last, ye are the last rulers over this people on this mountain. 
For I know that not one will be left you to beget children on this holy mountain. Neither shall any one of you rule over the children of this people. Neither shall any great company be left on you on this mountain. Canuck said to them, Watch over your souls and hold fast by your fear of Elohim and by your service of him. And worship him in upright faith and serve him in righteousness, innocence, and judgment, in repentance, and also in purity. When Canuck had ended his commandment to them, Elohim transported him from that mountain to the land of life, to the mansions of the righteous and to, of the chosen, the abode of the paradise of joy, in light that reaches up to the Shamaim, light that is outside the light of this world, for it is the light of Elohim that fills the whole world, but which no place can contain. Thus, because Canuck was of the light of Elohim, he found himself out of the reach of death until Elohim would have him die. Altogether, not one of our fathers or of the children remained on that holy mountain except the, those three, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noach. For all the rest went down from the mountain and fell into sin with the children of Cain. Therefore were they forbidden that mountain, and none remained on it but through those three men. All right, so we can see why the flood had to come, because everybody, there was like nobody left, like three generations left. Yeah, and um, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to hear this. It's interesting to hear this side of the story and to get more input on exactly what happened prior to the flood. Um, the world has basically fallen into sin, and this is the same world that we are in right now. This is the same exact world that we are um, experiencing where the entire world doesn't know who our Elohim is. And you have billions of Christians who think that they're saved and who listen to a, a man in a 501c3 church who's telling them how their salvation is and they're all waiting for a rapture that's not going to take them anywhere. And they, um, they, they've just they've fallen into sin. They eat their pork chops happily. They're wedding. They're, they're, we're living in a world of extreme sodomy. The United States of America has fallen it, it, it's just it's really really fallen into a state of haplessness and a, a hopelessness world and that's not just the United States it's the entire world and so the only thing that's going to save us is, is a messiah the only thing that's going to save us is the second exodus and that's what we're waiting on and as we end this series as we end this this part we hope that you guys as a family out there will start keeping the laws statutes and commandments of our creator the law, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There is no other place that you will understand what sin is and what iniquity is. And we are told that we need to keep these laws, statutes, and commands for all generations until the end of time. And if we are not keeping them, then you're not going to find the kingdom path. You're not going to find the road home. And you're going to live in iniquity. And if we can see what these forefathers and foremothers did, everybody fell down into the lands. Everybody fell into to the, a better place, the partying land, what they thought was, was a, a great place. And for it, they all suffered. And for it, they, everybody got destroyed. And so, folks, we will leave you with this. I and have a quick question. Sorry. What's that? Did it say uh, Enoch was 385? Uh, 365, I think. This one said 385. Okay, it's 365. Yeah, there's different numbers. There's different ages in this compared to what Jasher and Jubilees is. There, This book at some level has had a set of corruption to it. It is the best translation we could find of this. But um, along with a lot of these different books, there are different um, times and different dates. And so, um, guys, we will leave it with that. Um, we hope that you guys have a wonderful time. We hope that you guys enjoyed this series. And we hope you have a wonderful week. Much love to you all. All right. Shalom. We're out.